Hello everyone. How are you today? My name is Michael and I'm here to welcome you to my YouTube channel and to talk a little bit about myself and to talk a little bit about the documentary that I would like for you to see. Uh, first, uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I um, All this uh, filmmaking ambition started uh, several, several years ago. Uh, after I completed uh, my uh, degree in, uh, in business management, uh, I studied at uh, a school here in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. It was called Park University. I was very active in the theater department during those years I was there. And uh, after I finished my studies, I decided to pursue uh, not necessarily acting, but I wanted to learn everything that was uh, everything that was there to learn about, about filmmaking. I wanted to get uh, the, the knowledge of, of everything that, that, uh, that went through the, the, the part of filmmaking that, uh, you know, intrigued me so much after, after my theater experience. So what happened was uh, after uh, a few years after, after I finished school, I decided to enroll in, enroll in a filmmaking workshop at uh, the New York Film Academy in Los Angeles, which I completed uh, after that. It was, just, uh, it was just a basic workshop, but it just uh, gave me the opportunity to travel to LA to, to get the feel of the city, the, the energy, the, the entire uh, you know, uh, community. And uh, it, was, it was a great time. Uh, uh, and, uh, I will say it was a, it was something completely totally different totally different from uh, where where I live currently live but I, uh, yet uh, I, I really enjoyed LA and uh, I wouldn't want to live there maybe someday if I have a lot of money which uh, I hope to someday make make some really good money but anyway um, so after I completed that workshop I st I bought my own equipment. And I started making my own short films, just just you know, just trying to get the experience of, of making movies, of short uh, shorts, you know, just how it is, how it works with uh, everything from shooting a movie, uh, editing, sound, uh, you, you know, different angles, and and everything. And uh, and uh, since we're on the subject, you know, I just pretty much got uh, friends and, and family members to to just just make short movies. And, uh, and, and just anything, just a short topic, uh, and, and just put it together and, and edit it and, and, and get the practice of, of, uh, of making movies. So really, I, I started a very, very um, um, uh, slowly and, and like anybody, just with time, you know, got more and more practice, more practice and in it besides, uh, besides that or, or or I should bring in the fact that you know I come from a, a, an acting background. I was able to uh, to incorporate that with with everyone that helped me as far as you know just from what I learned. Try to help uh, get everybody to to uh, you know shoot certain scenes. I, I taught them a little bit of what I wanted them to do. So in, so in essence, I, I was also you know not not that I was the next uh, Robert Rodriguez, <laughs> but uh, I wanted to. Uh, you know, I also teach acting and uh, and uh, scenes, uh, blocking scenes, uh, um, everything, uh, sound, lighting sometimes. Uh, but really, it was it was just a, a a way of just getting the experience, and also having fun, not taking it too serious because I was a nobody, just making movies, and uh, that's uh, that's how I got my my start. It was all because uh, I started acting in college theater, and then I continued on my own, and um, you know, making my movies, and uh, that's that's I got a little bit of more confidence doing that, and uh, finally, I just uh, one day I just decided to uh, when I was working on short movies and uh, editing them, I just decided I, I was thinking, well, you know, I, I know the city of Juarez, Mexico. And I was like, I, and one one day I thought, well, well, nobody's ever done something uh, on the topic of the Day of the Dead, 
So it just uh, I just started doing a little bit of research on, on how to put a documentary short. Uh, and then I, I got it, I got the idea, and then I, I prepared myself and I traveled to uh, to uh, El Paso, which which where, where I was raised. Um, I was born in Corpus Christi, Texas, but my family moved to El Paso when, we were, when I was very little. So I was raised in El Paso, and uh, I have some relatives that live in Juarez, so I, I got to know the city over time, you know, visiting the city of, of Juarez, and, and that was back in, uh, back in the 80s, back in the 1980s, the good old 1980s. Uh, but uh, then uh, it just just occurred to me that you know I got all this experience making making uh, making short movies, and I just said, well, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take this seriously. And I'm gonna go into the city of Juarez, and I'm gonna you know take my equipment and uh, and just see if I can sh shoot this uh, shoot this documentary. And honestly, when it when it was completed, I was surprised myself how how uh, how it came out. I thought I had something really, really good, and uh, I just, you know, when I completed it, I didn't really know where to, who to take it to because it was a short, but uh, it was streaming um, online for some time, and uh, for about two years, and finally, now I think it's time to uh, to use this, to use this documentary and, and, and get this uh, on my YouTube channel. So, so people can enjoy it and see it and see what it is. Uh, so, so they can see the people of, of Juarez, you know, because Juarez has suffered so, so much over. I would even say, going back to the early '90s, the city of Juarez was was became a, a city that was becoming infamous with, with violence and, and, and I think it, it escalated up to the point where you know it became a uh, it, it, it attracted international news due to the, the violence that has occurred that has occurred there during the past years of all this drug cartel violence that has been happening and, and has just pretty much uh, destroyed the city in a way so uh, the, the the documentary itself is shot in these cemeteries uh, that uh, or uh, in fact I, I myself uh, was was a part of this uh, day of the dead you know when I was five years old and I remember that I remember that where I conducted this these interviews that you're gonna see I was there because my my grandmother has a relative that was buried in that particular cemetery so I remember that you know as a five-year-old or so I was running around this the cemetery and how ironic that I would go back you know 35 years to shoot this documentary in this in this cemetery and uh, it, it, it's still there it's still the same little place it's 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 unique in its own way as you're gonna see but yet you know I, I also had a chance to visit a, another cemetery on that day. I was I was trying to do all this in one day, of course. So so it all came together. Now, in the intro for for the the uh, documentary, I, I found that, in fact it was my brother that found this uh, cemetery, this this really small cemetery out in the middle of nowhere, outside of El Paso. And he told me, he said, he called me, he said, hey man, I got this place that I found that I think it'd be work great for your, for your documentary. So I was excited and uh, I, in my mind, I, I decided to use this, uh, this, this cemetery out in the middle of nowhere to use it for an intro and at the same time give it narration and give it a historical, historical perspective of what the Day of the Dead is. And it all, it all slowly came together. And um, I just thought I'd also tell you where where some of these places were. The first cemetery you're going to see where I was actually where I actually narrate. That's in a town. It's in a cemetery close to a town called Fabens, Texas. And uh, then we went over and we went into Mexico and to Juarez, and we 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 shot there in a cemetery. Uh, which is the, the, the really the, the really unique footage that you're gonna see. I shot that there in about oh between I would say between nine and 
9 and 11 o'clock, and then after that we took a little break and we went to another cemetery, and I was able to get some really good footage of, of just the, the people and the feel of, and, and everything you that they do. And of course, you know, I had to, uh, you know, get ready and come back so I can, you know, get myself back over to El Paso. But, uh, you know, I was, I was really excited about what I, what, what this documentary, what I, I knew I had some golden footage, I, I knew it. Now I was so anxious to get it together, and then and it all came came to be, and it came out great. But uh, you know, let me just explain what, what you're going to see when you see in the documentary is that uh, I, I was a little nervous because my parents did my parents did tell me they told me be careful, don't feel too comfortable, you know. When you're, you know, walking around with a, with a camera, you know, you just don't know how the city or how the people might might take this. You know, you just don't know. You, it's it's a city that's still very uncertain. You know, you don't don't feel too comfortable. So in a way, I was a little nervous. But you're gonna see that as I I, I started conducting these interviews, I started getting a little bit more and more confident, and I was very confident that the people were were actually giving me the time to tell me about. What, what traditions, what, what customs, what, what they do, and I found it so interesting that, that they, they were able to talk to me, of course, and, and uh, you know, uh, I, at one point I found this vendor that was so hungry, I had to try the food, because, you know, when you're there, you gotta have the food, and uh, uh, it was selling, uh, there were, this vendor was selling some, uh, some corn, and it's a different type of corn, corn on the cob, but uh, uh, he asked me, where are you from? And I, I, I think I hesitated a little saying that I, I didn't really want to say where I was from, but I said I was from Kansas City. <laughs> but I didn't really want to say because you just don't know what, you know, people, you know, where we got we got somebody from out of town, you know, that might, but he might have money, you know. And of course, I've been poor all my life, so they're going to take anything from me other than the camera. <laughs> but anyway, you're going to see that, that slowly, you know, I, um, I I started feeling more and more comfortable. By the end of the day, I was I was pretty much you know uh, just just very very content with with how the day went. Um, there was uh, the the very first person that I approached to approach to talk to, and and, and I exp I, I uh, presented myself and who I was and what I'm doing and, and all that. The very first person that I tried to talk to. I asked if he would be willing to give me some time and just tell me about what he does for this day. What, and he said no. So after that, I was like, oh no, you know, I was just, I was like, what am I gonna do? What am I, what am I doing here in a way? I was like, is this, you know, is I was a little disappointed and discouraged that that this person said no, and and you know, of course, I respected that, so I had to back away. But then I conducted the first, very first entry. I think it was a couple. A couple, and and they were so nice, and they were so willing to talk to me, and I, you know, I just I was so careful of what I said, and, and, and just you know, I if they gave me like three or two minutes, I was happy. I wasn't going to question them for for too long. There were some people that wanted to continue continue talking and, and so forth, but you know, I, I edited and I'll put it all together. So anyway. Uh, this uh, this documentary is is the Day of the Dead in the city of Juarez, Mexico. Uh, it was it's unique. I think you'll find it in, in very very uh, interesting, and, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, also, uh, you know, I I shot all, most of my movies, most of my short movies in the city of of, uh, of, of El Paso, and you know I, I love the feel of the city because you just feel like you get you get the in a way you get the best of both worlds you know El Paso and Juarez are still two 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 cities that are, are so different and so similar in a way because uh, you know back in in the 1980s uh, when I was there I graduated in, in uh, 1993 in the late 80s and early 90s you know the the city of Juarez uh, was 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 in the late 80s and and uh, throughout the 80s the city of Juarez was so alive. It was, it was so unique. It was so there was a, there was a feel to the city. You know, uh, you could go over there and, and you could take uh, so much money and, and you can come back with with you know a lot of goods at, at a very good price. And 
You can spend a day with it. You know, if you visit some restaurants, there were there were some great food. I remember when I was over there, I, I would me and my uh, my uncle would take me to the movies, and we go to the movies, and uh, we had a blast. So as a kid, we had a blast. And um, what happened was, uh, as I grew up, you know, we started getting all these these high school my my during my high school years. Uh, I had some friends that that said, you know, we're gonna go to Juarez to hit the clubs, and I think I was only like, I think I was only 16. And they, they were a little older. They were like, a, you know, seniors. I was a, a sophomore, or I think I was a sophomore. And I wasn't so sure because, you know, like, you know, I was like, well, I was just following them, and they were like, yeah, come on, you're gonna, you know, you want to go to these clubs. So at the same time, you know, I was, I'm not, I wasn't much of a dancer. I mean, I, you know, I, I love the '80s music. You know, the '80s, I love all the, all the techno sound, all the '80s bands. But I wasn't so sure. But, but when we went there, you know, I was so surprised that, that there are two at the time in the late '80s. There were two uh, major international ports of entry. One was uh, over at what, where they call the Lower Valley. It's the, the Saragossa International Bridge, and then the one that's, that takes you from downtown El Paso into Juarez. I think that's called the Paso del Norte. That's the bridge, the Santa Fe Bridge, I believe, that, that takes you straight from, from downtown El Paso. You just go over this bridge, and as soon as you go over the bridge, at the, as soon as you go in there, you would go into Juarez, and all the clubs were there. I mean, you could just see the lights. They were just, and, and all the, it seems like all the high schools we're just heading over there on Fridays and Saturdays. I mean, it was packed. It was awesome. The nightlife was awesome. I remember clubs that that ex existed because I, I still talk to my cousin over there. He says that all those clubs, all that is gone. So the, these clubs, uh, they were, they were the, the, the best. You know, I'm talking about clubs that maybe if, if there are some people that, that remember those days. There were clubs, uh, Club Vertigo, uh, Club uh, Electric Q, uh, Sarawak. Um, then my personal favorite club that I remember I had, it was, the, it was the best time, it was called Cosmos, Club Cosmos. And these clubs were right there, as soon as you, you went into Juarez, they were, they, were, they were awesome and everybody was, you know, everybody was you know, bringing their, cruising in their cars and, and their, 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 you know, ninja motorcycles. The, the city was great back in those days in the, in the late 80s and, and I think, uh, you know, still in the early 90s, but you know the 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 club owners were so nice that you know they they you know they knew that we were for coming over from uh, what the, you know they call it Chuco El Paso and Chuco you know they know that they knew that and they were just so nice that they you know go ahead get in there and have, have a good time and you know, I remember that it was a blast you know those those days were a blast in the, in the late eighties but what happened to the city of Juarez was that uh, it, it, the the Based on what my parents told me was that in the in the the seventies, these uh, uh, maquiladoras is what they call maquiladoras assembly plants started popping up and they started growing and it started growing. So over time, it was pretty much based the the, the source of of, uh, of employment for the for the city of Juarez. These maquiladoras that are still I believe still still there today. So. Uh, what happened is that there, there was more and more uh, of them uh, uh, being built to, to, you know, manufacture whatever products they were doing. And, and I think that over throughout the 70s and into the 80s, uh, you know, word got out into the more like the inland states that there was a lot of work up in Juarez. So what happened was uh, I think that a lot of people started moving up, up, up north into Juarez to, 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 to work. And I think that's what happened. That's what happened. That's when the city, the city grew, you know, so much in the, in the 80s and, and you know, people in the 70s and 80s and into the 90s. And, and, you know, with that happening, a lot of people coming up and, and finding work and working, you know, and plus the city was, uh, was, such a, was such a great place, so it's such a lively city. And what happened, uh, uh, you know, of course, you know, you get more, more people, more people in the city, more and more, more populated. And along with that comes, comes crime, comes more crime. And I think that's what happened, that, that the city was just, just changing in a way. I mean, it was changing that, uh, you know, more and more people were coming and it was just, it was just growing so, so fast. And, and uh, 
And I remember that it was like, it was probably 1992 or 93 into 94. There was a, a I remember that the city was, was, was in the news because there was a lot of, a lot of teenage girls that were going missing. I mean, I'm talking about, you know, not just a few, I'm talking about, I think by, by, by everything was, was done, everything, I, I think even the FBI was in there investigating what was going on. I mean, by that time, I think it was like 500 girls uh, where they found, uh, you know, mutilated somewhere out there in the outskirts of the city of Juarez, and uh, some of them were just never found. So the city really started changing in those days. I really don't know what was happening. Uh, but that's what happened, that the, the, the violence was really growing and it was really escalating during those times and, and, and uh, the city was changing. And by the time that the 2000s came over, you know, the drug violence started, the, the cartel started taking over. And I think that what happened was that the, the people started moving away from the waters because it was just getting so bad. Uh, I think in, in, into the early uh, 2010s, you know, it's, just, it's when it really escalated and people were pretty much, you know, what, what the city was at, at, at during its, its golden years. It was just reduced to just, you know, a city filled with terror. So uh, what happened, uh, people, people left and, and all those businesses started closing down and the city just became a, a war zone during that time. And uh, that's that's pretty much what I what I remember. Uh, I mean, I've, I've been I've been li I have not lived in El Paso for for so long, but uh, I think that's what happened. I think that now now today I think that finally it's 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 gotten under control. What what's the violence that has been happening there? It's it's kind of it's kind of slowed down. That that I I think that the the city's starting to rebuild. You know, you know, business-wise, it's it's you know, businesses are starting to open up more. You know, the city looks like it's getting back on its feet. But you know, um, the the city of Juarez is unique in its own way. It's got its history. It, it's it's a great, it's still a great place. Uh, but it's it's very unfortunate what happened uh, uh, to the city after you know it's 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 golden decades, so to speak. But I think that this documentary that you're about to see uh, really gives you an insight as to, you know, what the people are, what they do, what their customs are. It, it's, it's unique in its own way. And of course, the, the, Day, of the, Day, the Day of the Dead is celebrated uh, nationally. It's a national holiday, but uh, I think that I had to do this documentary because I wanted you to see, I want people to see Juarez in a different way, not not for what it's known and what it's been known, for for all that the, the the you know the violence that that has happened to the city and that and that is not the city of Juarez. Uh, the city of Juarez is a very they have a hardworking people there that that try to live right and uh, try to make ends meet and just try to be good citizens, you know send their kids to school, and and, and try to be, make it a, a good city for for anybody you know for for anybody. And it's been a welcoming city, and uh, I think that this documentary will show that, that city in a different light. But uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, like I said, it's it's been through a lot, and uh, I, I uh, think that it's now time that uh, that somebody saw the city in a different way. And um, I hope that you enjoy this documentary, and uh, keep in tune on my my YouTube channel, and uh, I'll be. If I have any upcoming projects, which I intend to have more projects in the works, uh, I invite you to see my YouTube channel and to keep up to uh, uh, up to up to date as to what I'm doing, and I will uh, communicate and, and uh, inform you on what I'm doing. And um, I hope uh, you enjoy it. And uh, thank you very much for your time. See ya.